PPF, PAR, DLI, and what? What on earth do all of these things mean and why should you care? Listen, if you spent even a few minutes shopping for grow lights already, then chances are you've come across at least some of this terminology. And if your foray into the world of grow lights was anything like mine, then there's a fair chance you are feeling utterly confused right now. In this video, we're gonna do three things. First of all, I'm gonna explain what all of these terms mean and why there are, they are important. We'll talk about how they are measured and how they're all related. And finally, I'm gonna show you a worked example, as well as share with you a free online calculator that you can use to make sense of your next grow light purchase. My name is Nate, I'm from Urban Leaf, where we make indoor edible gardening easy and accessible. If you're interested in learning more about how to grow plants and food indoors, then make sure you like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. So what we're gonna do in this video is follow the flow of the energy from the socket in your wall through the grow light and finally ending up on the leaves of your plant. At each of these points, I'm gonna explain how we measure the energy, as well as illuminate some of the key areas where losses commonly occur. So let's start with uh, the energy coming from your wall socket. This is measured in watts. You've probably heard of them before. Now, a watt is a global standard for measuring uh, the rate of energy transfer, and one, uh, one watt sorry, equals one joule per second. Uh, wattage measures a rate of flow. Now, if we were talking about water, uh, we'd be measuring flow in liters or gallons per second. With electricity, we use watts. A thousand watts equals one kilowatt or kW. And if you left an appliance running that was rated at one kilowatt, if you left that running for an hour, you would have one kilowatt hour. If you pull out your utility bill, you're gonna notice that the way that they are measuring and also charging you for your electricity is based on your kilowatt hours of consumption. You will probably also see on that utility bill uh, what the rate is, uh, which is commonly quoted in dollars per kilowatt hour or cents per kilowatt hour. If you're in the US, uh, then fair chance that the uh, energy price you're paying is somewhere in the region of eight cents and 28 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, but if you don't have a bill handy or you live in another part of the world, then I recommend you look it up online. I've included a resource in the links below where you can find that information for all of the US states, but it's you're not gonna have too much trouble finding it. Anyway, the only thing that wattage tells you is really how much the grow light is going to cost you to run in terms of the electricity usage. Let's look at an example of the math that you can use to calculate this. Okay, so let's say for a second that we have a grow light that is consuming about 20 watts. Uh, that's what it's rated at. Um, so the first piece of math we can do here is to observe that um, that is equal to 0 0.02 kilowatts. So all I've done is just simply divide that by a thousand. Uh, the next put, input we need to add is the number of hours per day that we have that running for. And let's assume we have it on for 14 hours a day. So that's gonna be equivalent to 14 multiplied by 0 0.02, in other words, 0 0.28 kilowatt hours per day. If we multiplied that by 365, we would get 102.2 kilowatt hours per year, okay. Good, we're getting somewhere. So we've now got the annual uh, energy consumption per year. The final thing we need to do is add in a price. And I'm gonna assume for the sake of this example, 10.54, which happens to be the US average for 2019. And what we are calculating here, once we multiply this all together, is that we have an annual electricity cost of $11.07 .07 per year. I've also got a link uh, to this calculator on our website. And again, um, you can find that links and all the others in the comments section below this video. 
Now, the truth is that your plants really don't care how much your grow light costs you to run it. What matters to them is how much plant available light that that grow light actually delivers to their leaves. And we've got a couple more steps before we get to that point. Anyway, the next term that we need to consider here is called PPF. In order to know how effective a grow light is at growing plants, we need to understand what's called its efficacy. That is how efficient is the grow light at converting what's that are coming in into plant available light that comes out the other side. So a PPF, uh, which stands for photosynthetic photon flux, it's basically uh, a measure of the photons that are being emitted by a source of light. Uh, and we measure it with a unit called uh, micromoles per second. For grow lights, we only really care about the light uh, that is useful to plants. And that light um, is commonly measured by a unit called its par value. Uh, that is the unit that falls within the 400 to 700 nanometer range. So that 400 to 700 light is the par light. Par stands for photosynthetic active radiation. It's kind of like a qualifier for a PPF, if you will. You don't want to think about it like a unit of measure, like watts or pounds, but rather it's kind of an assessment of a certain type of light that we are interested in here from the plant's perspective. So what's going on is we have watts going in, we have PPF being generated inside the light itself. And again, some lights are better at that than others. And if you wanted to think about the efficacy of a grow light, you could just divide those two numbers together. You'd look at it in terms of PPF per watt. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Grow lights actually vary tremendously, hugely, in terms of the PPF per watt that they produce. There's a whole lot of reasons for that. I'm not gonna cover them in this video, but if you would like to learn more about this topic, then head on over to our website where we have uh, some separate blogs and videos on that topic. Once again, they are all gonna be linked below. Now the chart I'm showing on screen right now shows you PPF per watt for a number of grow lights that are being sold on Amazon today. I've measured all of these things myself. We've deliberately left off the products and brand names here. And the main reason for that is I don't wanna get in trouble from any of these companies. But to take a look at just how wide the range is here. The most efficient grow lights we tested offered 10 times as much light output for each watt that they consume. 10 times, that is a big, big difference. You know what's even crazier? One of the worst grow lights shown on the side over here in terms of its efficacy is a grow light that currently sells on Amazon for about 30 bucks and it has over 7,000 reviews. And honestly, in my opinion, if you're trying to go edible plants, it is a complete waste of time. Anyway, the next, next metric that we need uh, in order to translate uh, wattage into PPF available for the plants is a unit called the coefficient of utilization. The coefficient of utilization, or CU, is a measure of how much light exiting from a fixture uh, actually falls on an area of a certain size. In other words, how much of the PPF is actually, uh, that we're producing is actually making its way towards our plants. So imagine for a moment that we're living in a 2D world here and we have a light that is emitting PPF evenly in all directions, 360 degrees around it. Let's also say for a second that the plants are occupying an area below that light and the plants, uh, the area they're occupying basically takes up an area which is equivalent to 90 degrees. Since light is being emitted 360 degrees, but we're only using it in 90 degrees, what that means is that the coefficient of utilization here in this example would be 90 divided by 360, in other words, 0.25. The other 75% is essentially wastage. It's never gonna to get to the plants and quite truthfully, they don't really care about it. Okay, so we've got watts, we've got PPF or efficacy, and we've also got the uh, coefficient of utilization. Let's put all of these elements together in an example at this point. Let's say we have two grow lights. We've got an A and a B, and we'll say A is 100 watts, 
and B is only 50 watts. So A is twice as many watts as B. Well, if you believed much of the stuff you read online, um, then the 100 watt light must be twice as good, right? Wrong, that is not necessarily the case. And what I wanna do next is show you why. So for the purpose of this example, let's assume that the 100 watt light has a PPF per watt of 0.25 and a coefficient of utilization of 0.6. Therefore, the PPF coming out of this light would be 15 micromoles per second. Light B, let's assume that that has a PPF per watt or efficacy of 75 and a coefficient of utilization of 0.8. What that would mean is that the PPF coming out of this light is 30 micromoles per second. So what you can hopefully see in this example is not only will your electricity bill be 50% lower if you're running the 50 watt light, but your plants would actually be two times happier because they're getting twice as much light, okay? So wattage alone is not the end of the story here. Really all that wattage is telling us is how much energy we're drawing out of the wall. PPF um, tells us how much light is being generated and the coefficient of utilization told us how much of that light energy was being utilized and actually sent towards the plant's direction. We're nearly there, but that's not quite the end of the story. There are two more concepts that we need to understand here, and they are PPFD and DLI. Now PPFD, or photosynthetic photon, photon flux density, is a measure of the amount of PAR, and again, we're measuring PAR as PPF, that actually arrives at the plant. So where PPF is measured in micromoles per second, PPFD is measured in micromoles per meter squared per second. And so the main sort of uh, variable here that impacts PPFD is, is distance or area. Now that distance um, and the area that you're spreading light over is really important because light degrades very, very quickly with distance and as you move the source of light away. In fact, a point source of light follows what's known as an inverse square law. And what that means is every time you double the distance from the light, the intensity reduces by a factor of a quarter. In the diagram that I'm showing on the screen right now, we actually have the same globe and it's producing exactly the same amount of light, technically, at points D, 2D, and 3D. The difference is that at D, our light is being spread over one square. When you move to 2D, it gets spread over four squares, and then you can see that inverse square thing going on now. It's 0.25 intensity factor. And as you move to 3D, it's actually being spread over nine squares. So what we're doing is we're starting with the same volume of light, but we're just spreading it over a bigger and bigger area. Obviously, as we do that, it gets thinner. Let's go back to our example and look at our grow lights A and B. What we want to understand now is the impact of distance and how that can change what's going on with your plants. So let's assume that a 100 watt light was placed 15 centimeters away from the plant. What we have is an area being illuminated here with an area of 0.0225 meters squared. And uh, what we're going to end up with at the end of the day is 667 micromoles per meter squared per second. In the example with the 50 watt globe, let's assume we place that a little bit further away and we have a larger illuminated area of 0.09 meters squared, in other words, four times bigger. Um, what you'll see happen here is that the PPFD value is half what we had before at only 333. So what you hopefully noticed here is that the intensity of light being delivered by the 100 watt globe is twice as much. And the only thing that we changed here was distance. So what we've gone, what we're doing here is going back and forth in terms of, you know, figuring out which is the best of these two globes. If you would like to learn more about grow light placement for plants, I've included a separate resource with more information about that in the links below. Okay, we're nearly there, I promise. So the final concept that we're gonna to cover today is called DLI. 
Now, aside from distance, the other main variable that you can play with when you are using grow lights is obviously time. That is the number of hours per day that you are actually using the grow light for. A lot of people when they're using grow lights, they use some sort of timer um, to have it turned on at certain times uh, every day. And you know, you have the ability to adjust that, right? Now DLI, uh, which stands for daily light integral, is a measure of the number of photosynthetically active photons that you have accumulating on a surface, in this case a plant leaf, over a 24 hour period. It's a function of two things. Firstly, it's a function of the light intensity, which we would measure with PPFD. We've already talked about that. The other metric is time. Um, and for the purpose of calculating DLI, we measure time in seconds. Now, to kind of put everything in context here, um, we've already talked about, and hopefully you understand by this point, um, why plants really don't care too much about the wattage of your grow light. They do care a little bit more about PPF. It's slightly more important. By the time you get to PPFD, your plants definitely do start to care about metrics like that. But by far the most important number here from the plant's perspective is DLI. Now a decorative indoor plant, such as the one I have behind me here, uh, might have a DLI requirement of only about two, like two moles per meter squared uh, per day. However, if I was growing flowering or fruiting plants behind me, then what I would need is a DLI that could be as high as 20 to 30 uh, moles per meter squared per day. That's right, like 10 to 15 times more light for edible plants. Let's wrap things up here by finishing off with our worked example. So we had the 100 watt globe, it was 0.15 meters away, it was delivering 667 micromoles per meter squared per second. If we had that running, let's say, for four hours per day, then what we would be delivering in terms of DLI is 9.6 moles per meter squared per day. For the 50 watt grow light, it was delivering 333 micromoles per meter squared per second. But let's assume that we have that on for 16 hours per day. What we're gonna be getting out of that is 19.2 moles per meter squared per day. So again, the light B, the 50 watt grow light, because of the way we've played with these numbers, it ended up delivering twice as much DLI. So once again, you can see that we flipped the tables. Now I know there was a lot of information here and we went pretty fast through a lot of it. Um, so if you're feeling a little bit confused and wanna clarify things, that's totally okay. Um, there's two things that you can do. Number one, leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'm quite happy to respond to the questions. We're checking it most days. The other thing you could do uh, is head over to our blog. So there's a bunch of links below. Um, we have this entire video written out as a blog with step-by-steps. Um, you're also going to find the uh, free online calculator there, uh, the ones that I used to do this worked example. So you guys can have a play around with that, put your own numbers in, and uh, hopefully it'll you know, help you get your head around this concept. Because again, I know it was pretty intense. Anyway guys, I hope you have found this video useful. Um, my name is Nate, I'm from Urban Leaf, and if you'd like to learn more about indoor edible gardening, then there is three things I would recommend. First of all, subscribe to this channel. Um, we're putting out new content all the time and you'll be the first to know if you signed up. Secondly, head on over to our website. We have loads of free information there all about indoor edible gardening, not just lighting, but other stuff as well. The third thing you can do is we also have a private Facebook group called Indoor Edible Gardening. Um, it's free to join, but it's a great place to connect and uh, learn from other like-minded people just like you who are interested in growing their own food at home. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you've uh, found this useful and I will catch you next time. Take care.